For people who become deaf as an adult, life has suddenly changed and all the things that were taken for granted are no more. For family and friends, it's just as hard. Link's an organisation that offers a range of services to support deafened people. Frustration and lack of confidence are common feelings and having the courage to make contact with Link is a big step in itself. Losing your hearing is such a dramatic, life-changing event. The person will have grown up not even thinking about their hearing. They wouldn't have considered themselves a hearing person any more than they would have considered themselves to be a breathing person. And suddenly something that they took completely for granted and which is actually a key to the way they communicate with other people and relate to the world around them has gone. Louise Joy is a young expectant mother. Charlie, her first child, is just under three. She's always had some hearing problems. About five or six years ago, I went deaf in my left ear. Um, I didn't think nothing of it because I still had my right, well, my right ear, but I never had any problems with my right ear. And then it's Christmas just gone. I woke up in the morning and was totally deaf. The most important thing for Louise was her relationship with her son, Charlie. He was just two when she went deaf. When I very first went deaf, it was very difficult for me with my son. I felt that I wasn't a proper mum because I couldn't hear him if he needed me. And as a mum, you want to give them everything, you know, and I didn't feel that I was good enough. John Willis is a self-employed contractor. When he became deaf, he was a lorry driver, totally dependent on his mobile for work. He felt very isolated. I felt nobody was listening to me. Nobody was understanding. That's your, my family, my friends. It was a big shock. And it took a long time for me to get people to understand how I felt and that I couldn't hear what they were saying. You know, all the old jokes, drop a five pound note, he'll hear it, fall on the floor. You know, you go all through them jokes and, uh, and that makes you a little bit angry. Link organises a variety of services, including social groups, a chat room and intensive rehabilitation programmes. This is one of the challenging deafness courses which run all over the country. Everyone, at one time or another, has experienced communication problems. These are very common. Shahira, yes please. Um, help yourself to making cup of tea. I can't hear you when you're talking to me from the kitchen. At the station the other week I went to book a ticket to go to Southampton. There was quite a queue of people and I queued up. When I got, I said to the young girl, I am deaf. Please speak clearly. Okay. And you know oh. yeah. Okay. The little round thing and you can't see through it. Right. She mumbled. I said, I'm sorry. In the end, I got some paper, wrote down, I am deaf. Please write your answer and the mount of fare. Could you move to one side, please? There is a queue. I said, I have a train to catch. Jenny Knight lost her hearing 13 years ago. She came to the Link Centre and now is manager of the intensive rehabilitation programme. Some people just feel totally out of life. They feel totally isolated, very depressed, um, often suicidal. Some people have attempted suicide where they just can't cope with the changes. Living in the silent world is brought about. Sometimes it's living in a muffled world. They are making use of hearing aids, but not for speech perception. Um, I suppose what I like about the job is that I know what they're talking about. I've been there. Um, I still have good days and bad days, obviously. 
but I know when we were talking about that thick feeling when you don't understand something, you're put in that position, I know what they feel. One of the main things that LINK does is to run intensive rehabilitation programmes that last for a week where we bring together a group of between five and seven deafened people with their relatives or partner or close friend and we use the week to introduce new communication strategies, new ways of coping, ways of relaxing and basically help people to find a different way of living together because this has affected everyone, the deaf person and those that they live with as well. I'm not a person that likes staying away from home. So although it was only Eastbourne, which is sort of 40 miles away, if that, 30 miles away, um, I was a bit nervous. Um, but I got there and we stayed for the week. And when I left there, it was absolutely marvellous. I felt good. I was on a high. Um, all the people there that come and give talk to you during the days, each day you have somebody different. And I suddenly realised that I wasn't on my own. There's a lot of people like me out there. Lots of us. All got the same problems. I was at a very low point in my life and I really didn't think that I was going to overcome it. Although I had the support and help from my husband, I didn't feel that it was enough because I felt as if I was the only deaf person in the world. And it, it was my consultant that suggested going on the LINK course and um, we applied for that and we managed to get some funding for it. So we went to Eastbourne and I did originally think, mm, what's that going to do for me? Nothing, that's not going to help me here. But we went there and things changed. At Link, nearly all the courses are run by people who have themselves become deaf. After the intensive program that I attended, I fortunately had moved to Brighton, which is very close to Eastbourne. As soon as I had done that, I phoned the office up, the Link Centre, and asked them if I could pop in and say hello. I did that. It happened that I phoned at the right time because they needed some help. Uh, so I volunteered my time. And that led on to much more of me volunteering my time until eventually a new project came up, the Challenge and Deafness Project. They went to the wet, and the wet, he completely ignored Raymond and started talking to the wife. You know, just out of interest, can I have a show of hands if anybody else has experienced that same problem? One of the major improvements in what we offer is that we formally delivered our service basically in Eastbourne and nowhere else, whereas now we can make that available to anyone wherever they are in the UK. Um, the second main improvement is that the first service we delivered was the intensive programme and for a long time that was all that we offered. That met the need in the early days of deafness but it really didn't meet the needs of the people who had gone five years, ten years, twenty years down the line. So what we now do is support people at all stages. We encourage them to stay in touch with each other, we train people to set up support groups and we have really put in place a network of contact throughout the country. I don't feel isolated at all anymore. Not embarrassed about being deaf. Um, that's never embarrassed me. I can t turn around to people and say, I'm very sorry, but I am deaf. Would you just look at me when you speak to me? And I can lip read. And most, pre most people are pretty good for five minutes and then they turn their head away. I went to the Link Centre and they put everything in a new light and I've come, come home from there. I can do it, I can go to the shop, I can talk to people and I'll go out socialising with my friends, which I never thought I'd do again. Um, I listen to music. Um, I'm not saying every day is brilliant, but uh, you do have your off days, but it is a lot better. Oh. Yes. 
It's faster, faster. Can you catch me? Yeah! <laughs> The programmes run by Link give people some of the tools to be able to go forward with their lives and relationships, to feel less isolated and have more confidence. Most people come to Link having been referred by a medical professional or a specialist social worker, but you can contact Link directly. Remember, the sooner you get help, the better. For more information, please click on Contacts and Information.